Hi, Warren. This question comes from Paul Speaker of Chicago, Illinois. I believe he may be here today. Uh, he writes, one of your more famous and perhaps most insightful quotes goes as follows. Should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. In light of the unauthorized accounting scandal at Wells Fargo, of its admission that it charged customers for duplicate auto insurance, of its admissions that it wrongly fined mortgage holders in relations to missing deadlines caused by delays that were its own fault, of its admission that it charged some customers improper fees to lock in mortgage interest rates, of the sanction placed upon it by the Federal Reserve prohibiting it from growing its balance sheet, and of the more than recent $1 billion penalty leveled by federal regulators for the aforementioned misbehavior. If Wells Fargo Company is a chronically leaking boat, at what magnitude of leakage would Berkshire consider changing vessels? Yeah, yeah. Well, Wells Fargo. <laughs> Wells Fargo is a company that proved the efficacy of of uh, incentives, and it's just that they had the wrong incentives, and that was that was bad. But then they committed the much greater error, and I don't know exactly how or, or who did it or when, but if ignoring the fact that they had a faulty incentive system, which was incenting people to do things that were kind of crazy, like opening non-existent accounts, et cetera. And, uh, you know, that is the cardinal sin at Berkshire. We know people are doing something wrong right as we sit here at Berkshire. You can't have 377,000 employees and expect that everyone is behaving like Ben Franklin or something out there. And they, we, I don't know whether there are 10 things being done wrong as we speak or 20 or 50. The important thing is we don't want to incent any of that if we can avoid it. And if we find that it's, when we find it's going on, we have to do something about it. And that is absolutely the, uh, the key to it. And Wells Fargo didn't do it, but Solomon didn't do it. And the truth is we've made a couple of our greatest investments where people have made similar errors. We bought our American Express stock. It was the best investment I ever made in my partnership years. We bought our American Express stock in 1964 because somebody was incented to do the wrong thing in something called the American Express Field Warehousing Company. We bought a very substantial amount of Geico. We bought what became a half, a half of Geico for $40 million because somebody was incented to meet Wall Street estimates of earnings and growth, and they didn't focus on having the proper reserves. And that caused a lot of pain at American Express in 1964. It caused a lot of pain at Geico in 1976. It caused a layoff of a significant portion of the wor workforce, all kinds of things. But they cleaned it up. They cleaned it up, and look where American Express has moved since that time. Look at where Geico has moved since that time. So the, the, the fact that you are going to have problems at some very large institution is not unique. In fact, almost every bank has, uh, all the big banks have had troubles of one sort or another, and uh, I see no reason why uh, uh, Wells Fargo, as a company from both an investment standpoint and a moral standpoint going forward, is in any way inferior to the other big banks with which it competes. Uh, it, Geico came out stronger. American Express came out stronger. But, uh, uh, the question is what you do when you find the problems. Charlie? Well, I, I agree with that. I think Wells Fargo is going to be better going forward than it would have been if, it, if these leaks had never been discovered. Or happened. Yeah. So I, I think it, it uh, but I think Hein Harvey Weinstein has done a lot for improving behavior too. <laughs> yeah. it, it's the, 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 it was clearly a, an error, and 
they're acutely aware of it and acutely embarrassed and they don't want to have it happen again. No, I, 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 if I had to say which bank is more likely to behave the best in the future, yeah, it, it might be Wells Fargo, of all of them. This New York Times that I have here from March 12, 1942, if you go toward the back of it, in the classified section, you have one big section that says help wanted male and another one that says help wanted female. You know, was the New York Times doing the right thing in those days? You know, I think the New York Times is a terrific paper, but that people make mistakes and, and you know, the idea of classifying between taking ads and saying, well, we'll take them and divide them up between men and women with jobs we think are appropriate, you know, or the, the, the advertiser thinks appropriate. That, it, we do a lot of dumb things in this world, and uh, Geico, as I say, in the, in the early 1970s, they, they just ignored, uh, and you can do it, the setting of proper reserves, which mean they charged the wrong price to new customers because they thought their losses were less than they were. And I'm sure some of that may have been a desire to please Wall Street or just because they didn't want to face the, how things were going. But it came out incredibly stronger. You know, and now it in, it's got 13% of the households in the United States insured, and, 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 uh, and it's, it, it came out with an attention to reserves and, and that sort of thing that, that was heightened by the difficulties that they found themselves in when they almost went bankrupt uh, 40, 42. It was a lot more stupid than Wells Fargo. It was really stupid what they did way back, right? Yeah, they had the world by the tail, and then they yeah. then they uh, quit looking at, at the reserve development. But it was uh, American Express was just picking up a few dollars by having the field warehousing company in 1963, and you know they were worried whether it was going to sink the company. And uh, when some guy named Tino DeAngelis and I think it was Bayonne, New Jersey. In fact, I went to the annual meeting in 1964 of American Express after the scandal developed, and somebody asked if the auditor would step forward. And the auditor from one of the big firms, which I won't mention, came up to the microphone, and somebody said, how much did we pay you last year? And the auditor gave this answer, and then the questioner said, well, how much extra would you have charged us to go over to Bayonne, which was 10 miles away, and check whether there's any oil in the tanks? <laughs> so it, you know, here was something, in a tiny little operation, some guy was calling in from a bar in Bayonne and telling them the phony stuff was going on and they didn't want to hear it. They shut their ears to it. And then what emerged was one of the great company after this kind of what they felt was a near-death experience. So it's, it, we're gonna make mistakes. I will guarantee you that we will get some unpleasant news at Berkshire. I don't know what it'll be, you know. The most important thing is we do something about it. And there have been times when I've, I've procrastinated and Charlie has been the one that jabs me into action. And so he's performed a lot of services you don't know about. <laughs>